Welcome to my YouTube channel. I assure you that you have made a right choice by investing your time in this video. First of all, we would like to express our deepest gratitude to all our subscribers without whom this channel wouldn't have been successful. It takes time, but with your continuous support, we are encouraged to strive and grow. We also like our new audiences to be part of this channel by subscribing and sharing our videos. Let's talk about today's topic, Bitcoin. So what is Bitcoin? Explaining somebody Bitcoin today is like explaining the internet to people a few decades ago. No, 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 no. Oh, please wait a minute. I don't understand one word you're saying, but it sounds great. If you say it can be done, that's good enough for me. In simple words, it is money. The money whose value is not controlled by central government but by people like you and me through peer-to-peer -peer transaction. We'll explore more into this concept later in this video tutorial. So do watch this video till the end because I'll be sharing you a lot of concepts in this video that is going to just blow your mind. Holy cow. Furthermore, if you are in financial sector, cyber security sector, or, or a just tech enthusiastic. This video will provide you with a great deal of information that you don't want to miss. So stay tuned. Bitcoin inception no. has its root in the 2008 global financial crisis, where the banks who were too big to fail like the Lehman Brothers collapsed, leading to a chain effect and ultimately causing the worldwide economic meltdown. In that crisis, many people were protesting against their central governments who did not take any precautionary measures to prevent this crisis, leading to worldwide disbelief in their way of managing currency. In this turmoil situation, an anonymous person or group of persons known as Santoshi Nakamoto published his research paper on public cryptographic forum, where he said that he had developed an electronic cash system that will work over the internet which is based on peer-to-peer -peer transaction. He explained the, his theory in his white paper with proof of concept. Later on, other brilliant minds decided to join him and that led to the creation of first global decentralized money or virtual currency known as Bitcoin. If I have not lost you by now, let me explain you the concept of money. Fiat or physical currency that you carry is nothing more than a promissory note or a legal tender that is recognized by everybody. Why? Because the government of the country to which that currency belongs to has promised or guaranteed that they will pay the value mentioned in that currency. In this way, we are trusting our government to make good on their promises by keeping the value of the currency afloat. So what happens when the government betrays our trust? The money becomes worthless. We lose our hard-earned saving and let's say what follows is not a good picture. In peer-to-peer -peer transaction, the value of Bitcoin is determined by people based on demand and supply. When there is more demand of Bitcoin, its price will increase and where there is less, it will decrease. As of today, 13th June 2020, at 4 hours 3 minutes 23 seconds, the current price index of Bitcoin can be seen from this figure. I like to point out another major thing, that is Bitcoin is a very volatile currency. The history is witness, the value of Bitcoin has increased sharply and similarly plunged, causing a lot of investors to lose their substantial money. So if you are thinking of investing in Bitcoin, make sure you do your homework. Don't invest because your father friend's son is getting rich by doing it. The transaction of Bitcoin works as an open accounting system, as there is a network of a lot of computers whose main job is to record the ownership of transactions in a public ledger which is called blockchain. The process of recording the ownership of transactions is called mining. Every miner is rewarded with a Bitcoin for successful completion of the recording 
of the transactions. We will not go into the details of blockchain or mining because they are a huge topic on their own. So it may be subject matter for my next video lectures. Before we move ahead, I want you to understand this very clearly. In some countries, it is illegal to trade in Bitcoin. In Nepal, it is illegal to trade in Bitcoin. As you can see from this notice from Nepal Rashtra Bank, which is the central bank of Nepal, it says clearly that Bitcoin is not recognized as the official currency of Nepal. So it is illegal for anybody to carry out any transactions in the Bitcoin. But if you are in other countries, you want to first check with your country's regulatory requirements before you decide to do transactions in Bitcoin. For this demonstration purpose only, I am going to use how Bitcoin transaction is done through the gift card. I am going to convert a PlayStation gift card into the Bitcoin. Again, watch this video till the end. I will tell you the risk behind it. For those who do not know what PlayStation gift card is, it is like a prepaid card which you can use only to buy PlayStation games, just like in department stores where you will be given a gift card for purchasing goods at discount price. Now uh, there are many websites which uh, lets you to uh, trade your gift card and uh, CoinCola is one of them. So this is the website of CoinCola. First you need to register uh, CoinCola with either by your email or your phone. Okay, so it is a very simple, uh, it is very simple and easy to uh, register in CoinCola. So there is, uh, they don't ask you a lot of questions. Okay, now you have to set a payment passport. It is like a transaction pin. Uh, if you have used uh, electronic, uh, sorry, internet banking application or uh, different other wallets. Okay, so make it, uh, make sure that uh, the, your uh, payment password are longer and complicated. Okay, let's go to gift card uh, trade section. Okay, these are vendor who are uh, who are willing to purchase your gift cards for Bitcoin. Since uh, I have a PlayStation gift card, so I will select, I will search for the vendors, and uh, there are altogether three vendors. And I am going to select this vendor because his uh, limit is quite low, one, from 20 USD dollar to 1000 USD dollar. So since I am selling uh, only 20 USD dollar worth of gift card, I'll enter the value 20 dollar. See how much dollar worth Bitcoin will I be getting? Only 9 dollar. That is below half of my value of gift card. So why somebody in their right mind will do this transaction? I will explain you the reason later in this video. But for this example, I will place the value. I will click on buy now button, then I will place the order. Okay, so your order has been created. Okay, now I will click I have paid button. Okay, so these are the instruction of uh, that I need to follow to sell my gift card. So I need to send message to this vendor. Okay, so just I have sent him hi. He has replied me as a hello. Okay, so I will type uh, some messages regarding that I have a, a one PlayStation card that I like to sell for Bitcoin. Okay, let's see what happens. See, uh, this vendor is taking long time to reply me because there are a lot of uh, I think there are there are a lot of customer who, who wants to sell their gift cards to him and he has to cater them all okay okay I will again uh, ask him okay so he has not replied me so I have to initiate the conversation okay so he is asking me to send E codes of my gift card. Okay, I will say uh, tell you what is uh, what the e codes look like, or you might uh, already know that. Okay. Okay, so this is my uh, PlayStation gift card, and these are the e codes which he is asking about. 
so I need to copy paste and send it to that vendor okay so I will now send him uh, my codes of a PlayStation gift card and uh, uh, he will take some time to verify these codes whether they are genuine or not and uh, this will take some time okay you can see that I have only uh, I have created option in the circle there okay I have just created my order and there are certain steps that need to be followed okay there are step 1 2 3 and 4 okay in the meantime let's check uh, the uh, credibility of this vendor so this vendor has done 1000 about trades okay now he has also rating of 99 percent that is very good okay now uh, i think he has verified my course and my assets has been released or meaning that i have received the bitcoin okay uh, so let's check uh, check that i'll go to my wallet and as you can see i have received 0 0.0092449 0 bitcoin wow that is very low amount so by the way do you know that bitcoin can be broken down, down into eight decimal places so that any amount of money can be represented in a bitcoin now let's try to withdraw my uh, withdraw this bitcoin and transfer it to my wallet so in withdraw address i am going to put my receiving address of wallet just copy paste uh, it's very easy stuff okay and then i'm going to withdraw uh, put the withdraw amount here so let's withdraw whole amount and let's see what happens okay i need to put my payment password that uh, i have created earlier my transaction is not successful because i am getting error of minimum balance uh, because if you see here minimum withdrawal amount is 0 0.003 bitcoins with netto transfer fee of 0 0.005 bitcoins uh, which can be greater depending upon the network congestion so total comes around to be 0 0.008 and plus and I have only around 0 0.009 uh, Bitcoin so I think it is not enough to make successful transfer anyway you got the idea in some countries this kind of transaction may be illegal as you may be charged with money laundering for new bills, money laundering is not converting illegal money to legal, but it is the process of hiding the source of income. Have I confused you? I am so sorry. Let me clarify this with an example. Let's say somebody, we will call him Mr. Criminal, has stolen a whole bunch of credit cards. He cannot use those cards directly because the transaction can be traced and he will be caught. So his next genius plan is to buy a lot of gift cards from those credit cards. Then he will convert the value of those gift cards into bitcoins. So in this way what he has done is called money laundry. He had obtained those cards illegally by stealing and converted the money into gift cards. Again the source of income of that gift card is stole, stolen money from credit cards. right? Finally, once he has converted gift cards into Bitcoin, he has successfully hidden the source of income because the whole premise of Bitcoin is based on privacy and anonymity. This is the reason why in an earlier demonstration I was offered $9 worth of Bitcoin rather than $20 because the vendor knows that anybody who has bought gift cards genuinely will not convert it for Bitcoin unless that person has a dubious motive. Having said that, I don't want you to take this point home, that is Bitcoin is bad. The purpose which had led to the creation of Bitcoin was very good. It is the best gift for humankind. 
With privacy, there comes anonymity. Both concepts look similar in a sense but may carry different meanings according to the situation. You want privacy, that is your right. But when somebody wants to be anonymous, then the main objective here is that he does not want others to find out what he is he doing. In most cases, that may not be for the right purpose. Take the example of Silk Road, where anybody could buy any kind of illegal drugs via Bitcoin. Yes, some bad actors are using Bitcoin, but aren't there in other sectors? That's it for this tutorial. I hope you have found this very useful. If so, please share this video as much as possible so that others will also get benefit from this tutorial. We are soon going to start YouTube series regarding learning Python programming through ethical hacking. I'll be teaching you about Python programming from the beginning and also the beginner concepts of hacking with all practical examples. This is going to be a very interesting course. So if you are interested, subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any updates.